works primarily on environment education towards increasing citizen database on building awareness, conducting echo trials, collaborating with education department, forest department, pollution control board, chains of schools and colleges, citizens and youth in WWF India's relentless effort to fulfill the mission of re reducing impact, human impact on environment and to create a future where humans live in harmony with nature. She played a key role in hundreds of native saplings be to be distributed under the Adopt a Tree campaign where more than 10,000 trees have been planted through, through collaboration. More than one lakh citizens, corporates and families join hands in their signature Earth Our campaign during 2021. Working on collaboration and roping in partnerships for outreach in her forte, Bangalore University Metro Rail Corporation, Rotary, management institutions like IM, schools and colleges, education department, Bharat Scouts and Guides, Karnataka Rajya Vidyan Parishad, Akshaya Patra, and now University Law College are a few to name. She is a keen bird watcher and photographer, taking part in Asian water bird census, backyard bird count, among the varied other records. Ma, we are honored to host you this evening and we are all keen to hear from you now. I would kindly request you to take over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harshita, for the elaborate introduction. Thank you. I thank respected principal and chairman, Professor Dr. Suresh V. Nadagauda, and the entire faculty, University Law College, for giving me this opportunity today. We did collaborate with your college even last year. In fact, this year, your college is participating in our ECO, which is Environment Heroes project, which is nice. We work closely with a few other institutions as well, including Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, NIE Crest, Mysore, and Mount Carmel College, Bangalore, to name a few. I hope more and more schools, colleges, and youth come forward, take part in our projects, volunteer in our programs, learn, share, have conversations and take appropriate actions, enabling healthy environment and making right decisions to be a part of our life. This week, as you all know, is celebrated as Wildlife Week. And 4th October was World Habitat Day, an initiative by UN. And the theme this year is accelerating urban action for a carbon-free world. In this connection, I have been asked to talk on biodiversity. Obviously, biodiversity, habitat, they all are a part of nature. So basically, the talk is going to be a mix of all of these. I don't know how many are present today, but I don't want to bore the participants. I promise not to. So this interactive session will have a presentation covering what we in WWF India do, what is biodiversity? Why do we need it? What are the various biomes? A glimpse into them, a few examples. And what is marine ecosystem? A few videos. And also how is law, you all are law students. So how is law, you already might be aware, but how is it helping us in preventing the loss of biodiversity? What actions you as youth can take? And then finally, we have the anthem from Ricky Cage and a little minty quiz, finally ending up with Q&A. There's too much on the menu, isn't it? So let's get started. So if you see the, Harshita, uh, Sohini, have you shared the PPT? Yeah, ma'am, I'm just doing that. So the very first slide, when you see, I would like you all to take just a second, maybe 10, 15 seconds. And there's some background noise. Can you all mute, please? Okay. So if you see the first slide, I would like you all to quickly put on the chat box in 10, 15 seconds, what comes to your mind when you see this? Harshita, can you see anyone putting in the chat box anything, any responses? Um, as of now, we don't have any responses. If there's any, we'll let you know. How come? Come on, participants, just put whatever comes to your mind when you see this first slide. 
another 10 seconds we will wait before we move on to mm -hmm. okay good impact of climate on nature what else whatever comes to your mind you don't have to think through it whatever you see whether it is whatever you get in your mind when you see this before we move on to who we are what we do and all of that okay aha uh -huh. poor food quality correct mm -hmm. i can only see dr jyoti vishwanath who is posting it all right maybe because in the last couple of days you all have been listening to so much of biodiversity and nature and probably related stuff many of these things have become like a you know a cliche maybe all right fine so let's move on yes you park whatever you have mentioned there so all these things as you see it's a drab disorganized right so a lot of damage being caused and all of this so Nat natural crisis, yes, the calamity in the crisis. True. So we'll move on. Next slide, please. So let's peek into who we are, what we do in WWF. Okay. So WWF is the world's leading independent conservation organization. This cuddly black and white panda is our symbol who is relentlessly inspiring us in our mission. Our mission is to create a world where people and wildlife can thrive together. So I would like you to see a little video in the next slide, which will give you a glimpse of all the multiple pillars that we work with. So Hini, you have to share the sound and then play the video. You will have to go back to the previous slide and then play the video. Sorry, this is a heavy uh, PPT embedded with videos. So there might be a lag in time, kindly bear with us. Yeah, ma'am, I'm just going through it. Just give me a minute. It's in slide three. Just give it a second. You can share the sound. Is it audible, ma'am? Yes.
Thank you. So you got to know the multiple pillars we work with. So we have the sustainable agriculture team, we have sustainable business team, we have climate change team exclusively constantly working in different uh, locations that we are present. So now we are, look at this, how beautiful, isn't this? Isn't it so wonderful, so colorful, so orderly? So did you also know that we do have in India, you know, biodiversity hotspots? which are mentioned there already that you can see. In, in juxtaposition to what you saw the earlier, the first slide, which was so drab, disorderly, you know, without any colors, which was talking so much of damage, right? So let us, the, if you see this, there is marine as well as terrestrial. These are the two major ecosystems broadly divided. So let us now see what our Sir David Attenborough is going to talk about through his eyes on the global biodiversity. Now, this is a small glimpse of our country, but let us understand from a very broad mega perspective through the eyes of Sir David Attenborough. Here is the video for you. You need to unmute the, the sound. You can't hear. Thousands of different world habitats, millions of different species, billions of different individuals, and the trillions of different characteristics they all have. The total biodiversity of our planet is immense, which is a good thing because the more biodiversity, the more secure all life on Earth is, including ourselves. Only when life is at its most varied, vigorous, biodiverse can we hope to thrive. We may not know it, but we need towering forests across one third of the land surface to lock away carbon and keep the climate stable. We need millions of pollinators and billions of soil organisms and megatons of plankton to keep the food we eat in supply. We need strange plants deep in jungles to create our medicines and coral reefs and mangrove swamps to protect the coasts we depend upon. Our planet's biodiversity provides all the things we need for free. But it will only do so if there's lots of it. And at the moment, it's under attack. In the last 50 years, our activities have dramatically reduced biodiversity across the globe. We've snuffed out habitats, reduced populations of wild animals by 60% and even driven whole species extinct. The number of lions in Africa has dropped by 65%. The number of individual flying insects in Europe has dropped by 75%. The number of bluefin tuna in the Pacific has dropped by 95%. Biodiversity is dropping everywhere and fast. This is catastrophic for nature and therefore ourselves. We talk about climate change a lot, but biodiversity loss is as important an issue. How do we stop this loss of life? How do we ensure that biodiversity, our planet's vital statistic, begins to increase again? In fact, we already know exactly what to do. Follow Our Planet, visit ourplanet.com and watch the series on Netflix. Okay, so now we already know what is biodiversity and what is the 
impact that we have as humans have caused on the planet. So in this next slide, you will see the various biomes which are there. Various biomes are basically the species which have existed, which have thrived, which have evolved and adapted to a particular surrounding, to a particular environment and weather conditions, both flora and fauna. So these are called in broader perspective in simple terms as biomes. So I have particularly chosen the animals which are there so that that represents various biomes where they thrive. So when you look at this and when you saw the earlier video, we understand that it is not very simple. Biodiversity is something that we cannot create. We might have caused a loss to it, but to create that, we might talk different things like afforestation, tree planting events. But that is a very, very small thing we need to do. It is very important. But what nature can do freely is something that we are not able to do. They are doing it, like the pollinators, for example, the honeybees, the squirrels, the insects. It's their job. They do it with joy. It, it just happens. But with us, it is an effort. We have to manually do it and we do not know, we do not understand the mathematics, the chemistry of it, of biodiversity. It is complex. So what measures we have to take, what actually has happened, what is our, the, the Living Planet Report, what does it say? Let us get a little deeper into it. But before going there, of all these biomes, I'll just pick up one of it, which is about the forests, because we know that from forests, we get so many things from the forest. Our life depends on the forests and also clean water, right? So let us see who protects the forests. So next slide, please. So we need healthy forests. We can't create the forest. Because as you can see, there are different species of trees which are there. And these are shola grasslands and forests together. It, it, it is just there helping us. Who do you think protects these forests? Next slide, please. Fresh water. We need fresh water. We need to keep ourselves healthy for which we need fresh water, which flows from the mountains through the forests, amongst all the trees, carrying all the minerals that we need, it is rich. And we would like to take that into our body, which is a chemical factory. Our body can function well when we eat varieties of food, vegetables, fruits, and drink fresh water. And with a healthy body, we have a healthy mind. So our overall well-being is defined when we are healthy. So when we are healthy, we need to also define and see, is our nature, our surrounding healthy enough? Let's pick up one mammal. Let's move on and see who protects the forest. Next slide, please. So in the biodiversity, in the wild atlas, you can see all of those which are listed, big plants, insects, right? Reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals. So let's pick up one of the mammals. For example, next slide, please. Wow, the tiger. Do you see the range from where to where, from which altitude to what altitude the tigers can survive and they have lived? You can see them in the deep jungles, a forest, and you can also see them in mangrove forests, in Sundarbans. You can also see them high up in the Himalayan range, in that belt. Some of the facts for you to read through, I will just give you a few seconds. You can read them through. It's self-explanatory. Next slide, please. And as you can see, it has beautiful color. Animals have these colors to protect themselves, to camouflage. So tiger is one of them. 
And as you know, no two tiger stripes are alike. And why are they called Knights of the Ninth? Because of their vision. And tiger cubs are born, in fact, when they are born six to 14 days, they are not able to see. It says that its range is anywhere between 10 to 20 square kilometers. So if we protect one tiger, you know how much of the forest region, forest cover that we can protect. And it's not just tiger alone by itself, it is protecting. It is protecting many other life forms because it does not consume, does not eat, it is not greedy. So it does not harm other things which survive there. So many multiple life forms thrive if we protect one tiger. And India is very proud. So everybody, all of us are taking a good role. We all are playing a part in protecting the tigers. And similarly, elephants, we have the highest population. So we need to feel very proud of our country where we are still consciously putting efforts to manage and control. Next slide, please. So this is just to give you like, I as I already mentioned to you on the, the prey and the predator, the balance. So it is beautiful. You will see a beautiful balance in the ecosystem. In nature, there's a lovely balance, a beautiful balance. And we are not outside of nature. We are in fact a part of nature. It's just that we are looking ourselves as different and nature as different. The moment we get into a canopy and start walking there, we breathe so well. We unwind ourselves. And when we see the greenery around us, we find so we feel ourselves so relaxed. There are these therapies which happens in some of these ashrams and in the in the resorts when people go, where they are mentally or very disturbed, stressed. They get out and they get take treatment in nature. Nature is the huge big laboratory which is there right outside our house. We just need to explore, spend some time there. We understand what balance means because we understand the prey and the predator concept. No one of these is more. If any one of these is in excess, then there's automatically an imbalance that is created. Similarly, when we eat good food, when, when everything is well balanced in our body, balanced in our mind, that is what is called as health, isn't it, after all? Let us now look at what are ocean coasts, the coastal regions and the reefs, the coral reefs, have got to talk about themselves and the marine biodiversity. Let's speak into that. Next slide, please. There's a lovely video I would like you to watch. You can share sound. You'll have to India go is surrounded by the Arabian Sea on the west coast, the Bay of Bengal. Ma'am, it's audible, right? Not yet. Can you play from the beginning, please? Okay, ma'am. It's not audible. It was, but it went off. You'll have to increase the volume there. I think we can now play. Oceans cover about 71% of the Earth's surface. India is surrounded by the Arabian Sea on the west coast, the Bay of Bengal on the east. Yeah. 
Leah, sorry about the lag. Yeah, ma'am, the videos are lagging. You can go back to the previous slide and. Yeah, ma'am. Kindly bear with us. You have to share the sound uh, clearly. Uh, and millions of little fish. Twenty percent of all Indians live. Ma'am, just tell me if it's audible. Just play it, and if it is giving a problem, yeah. so then we will move on. We'll keep it by the end. Okay, this is the last. Okay. Oceans cover about seventy-one percent yes. of Earth's surface. No, I think seven thousand okay. five hundred and sixteen kilometers. It's audible. Our yes. Home okay. to dolphins, whales, sharks, turtles, and millions of little fish. Twenty percent of all Indians live in coastal areas and depend on the sea for work and food. Around us are several different marine ecosystems, like lagoons, mangroves, coral reefs, seagrass beds, and intertidal habitats, like seashores and rocky shores. Intertidal habitats are areas where the land meets the sea. These zones experience constant fluctuations in water levels. Seashores interspersed with rocks are known as rocky shores. These shores are populated by animals such as anemones, crabs and sea stars. Seaweed, algae and oysters can often be found attached to the rocks in these regions. Sand-covered beaches or sandy shores are another intertidal habitat. Marine animals are harder to find here, with most burrowing themselves into the ground to keep safe from the waves. Nevertheless, sandy shores are home to many species of crabs and clams. Coastal lagoons comprise shallow coastal water bodies separated no. from the ocean by a barrier and are usually found parallel to the shore. A number of lagoons are present on the east and west coasts of India, including Chilika in Orissa, Pulikat on the border of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, and Ashtamudi and Vembanad in Kerala. Coastal lagoons are very valuable for fisheries and aquaculture. Mangrove forests are transitional regions that form a protective belt between land and sea, and act as flood control systems. In India, these can be found in the deltas of rivers such as the Ganga, the Mahanadi, the Godavari, the Krishna and the Kaveri, as well as on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Sundarbans are the largest contiguous mangrove forests in the world and are home to fiddler crabs, mudskippers, saltwater crocodiles and sea snakes. The soil in these habitats contains less oxygen so some of the plants that live here have adapted to these conditions and have small stick-like breathing roots called pneumatophores. Coral reefs are one of the most beautiful and colourful marine ecosystems. Corals are found in tropical shallow waters of the ocean. 
Although often mistaken for a rock or a plant, a coral is actually composed of tiny fragile animals called coral polyps, a cousin of the anemone and the jellyfish. Coral reefs are home to animals like turtles, sea snails, giant clams and several species of colourful fish. In India, coral reefs are found in the Park Bay, Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch along the central west coast of India, Lakshadweep atolls and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Seagrass meadows serve as feeding, breeding and nursery grounds for many vertebrates and invertebrates of commercial and ecological importance. They act as nurseries for several species of fish and invertebrates that move to coral reefs and other ecosystems as they mature. They are also important feeding grounds for herbivorous grazers like green turtles and dugongs. Marine habitats face multiple threats from climate change, plastic pollution, illegal trade, unsustainable fishing and coastal development. So what can you do to protect marine life? When near marine habitats, do not disturb the animals. This includes collecting shells, breaking corals or picking up live animals. Do not litter the beach. Be aware of the marine habitats around you. Read books and learn as much as you can about these fascinating creatures. We have one earth and one home. Let's treat it right. So now this is on the marine biodiversity. We have covered on the terrestrial, the various biomes, uh, the habitat, which is there and the marine. So why do we have to have this biodiversity? Only when we know about it, we value it and we preserve it. Some of it we already have seen and why we need it. Let us get to the facts, numbers in the couple of coming few slides. And then we will see the health of our planet, like how we just mentioned about our own health and why we need. We'll also see what the health of the earth looks like and what we can do. Next slide, please. So nature is home for biodiversity. It provides us with food, it gives us shelter, it gives us medicine, clean water, healthy soil, and it inspires. Like I was just mentioning about when we just take a stroll in the canopy, when we just go out, right, climb a hill, get into a forest, surrounded by trees, or near the water, waterfalls, these are very, very rejuvenating, refreshing. We feel so fresh and then we feel so energized and it brings people together. So it plays many multiple roles, quantitative, qualitative, and also some are not tangible, right? Those are all the benefits that we get from this. Next slide. So here you can see how, what are all the various roles that it plays, nature plays. It provides us with services, provisioning us with all of those things. It regulates, it balances, and also brings us together as a community. So all these are the various roles it plays. Next slide. So as you can see, forests absorb a third of global emissions every year. And we, it is humanly impossible for us to create a forest. Now, when we talk of biodiverse forests, what happens is we have been seeing um, different types of trees are there. When some are flowering, some are dry, some other trees are fruiting already. So just imagine, e even if there is a forest fire, forest fire does not happen. In nature, it does not happen. More than 90% is man-made forest fire for various reasons. So, which all, you already might be aware of. So what happens is even in case there is fire, it gets, it gets put off, right? Because it gets doused because of the biodiverse trees which are there. Some might be dry, but many other trees, there are flowers, there are fruits, there are still green twigs, branches. So it quickly gets doused. 
if you we have a monoculture trees you might say why do we have to have diverse trees why can't we have a patch of all palm oil trees why can't we have hectares of rubber trees isn't that biodiversity isn't that enough for us let us not have these forests let us just have these kind of trees where we go ahead and plant for hectares we can use the drone thousands can be planted in a day's time and quickly now we have got saplings which can quickly grow in just about 5 years 8 years it already will be so tall it can bear fruits flowers everything like that or can we have rubber trees or nilagiri trees can we have that or can we have teak trees what happens how many life forms can thrive there how many diverse things that you have there how can those trees absorb the water or soil hold the soil give us fresh water they don't so that is the reason why diversity is needed and more than half of india's cultivated plants depend on these beautiful insects which without our own knowledge constantly continuously they are playing their role they pollinate so they are the natural protectors of the natural world so let us allow them to be there next slide please so now when we look at the report card the health card of the planet wwf brings out every once in two years a living planet report so let us see how it looks it's not a very healthy it's not a very bright beautiful colorful figure it is grim it is bleak it is a little serious so if you see on an average 68% there is a decrease in the population of the animals and you can see the kind of land use which are there which is causing this and overfishing pollution coastal development all of these things are playing a part you've already seen in the earlier videos like what are the threats what is causing this what actions needs to be taken so the actions are not very big it's a very doable thing you can do i can do we all need to do next slide please so this is more to do with if you go to our website you can see you can read a clear report a global living planet report which is published also you will see the india fact sheet in that which details out all these things you will also see feedback from experts which is loaded in that so i will not be spending more time there we can move on to the next one ah here we see needless to say the wastage one third of the food we produce around the world by weight is never eaten so much of water footprint so much of carbon footprint when we look into that has gone into it so for example we get exotic fruits which are sold we would like to buy them and eat them when you buy you must see this exotic fruit which has come from a far away country how much of carbon has gone into it into the footprint it gets shipped then it might come by flight or it can be in the via the truck on the surface then it gets to the local market how much of carbon footprint so when we look at that we need to these are ways where we can make conscious decisions responsible decisions do i need to buy this similarly when we when you when people eat i'm not talking about you as in you in general when people go and eat maybe a shark as a delicacy or a whale a part of the whale as delicacy people need to understand and think what am i actually consuming not just a part it's not even the whole it's many other things because if there is a whale that how many other life forms it would have protected so by taking away this if already taken away all of those so that is the kind of if we try to understand a little bit deeper in that 
we become more conscious. That is why I said, you let us know about it so that we value it. Once we value anything, we hold close to our heart and we want to protect that. We want to conserve that at any cost. Next slide, please. This again is all about the facts and figures, which is not very bright. But we in WWF, what we also do is in the climate change team, we give away the awards, the climate champion awards are there. So for the young entrepreneurs who have caused a, a positive impact by creating, by inventing something which can help the society, that they will submit the report, the entrepreneurs, the industries, and we in WWF will are giving the awards for those people. And we have one or two people from Bangalore also who have won the award, Climate Champion Award, which we are proud of, in fact. So the next slide, please. So what we have to do is scientists have already shown what is the impact going to be for 2030. We already know that there's COP26 happening in the month of November and everything is a, is a run up for that particular thing. And you as youth, the future is for the youth, the youngsters, the schools, colleges, citizens, youth. You are huge in number. You are taking the baton forward where we have erred, where we have not done up to our mark, where we have damaged, we have to apologize and say sorry to it, but that doesn't stop. A sorry doesn't mean anything much. So therefore, many of us are taking action. Many of us are driving others to take action. We are creating awareness. So let's join hands together and stop doing what is wrong completely altogether. And do less of damage. If at all it has to be, the damage has to be caused let us lessen it if we have to and find new ways of doing things. Next slide, please. Here is all the best practices that one can follow. You can avoid single use plastic, energy consumption. We can look at recycling and upcycling. Let us stop wastage of food and also tell people not to generate waste. Because in nature, if you see, there is nothing goes to waste. It's such a, it is such an irony that we are in nature, we are amidst nature, and we generate waste. We are the only probably, you know, species which is generating waste, and there's a huge waste management, right? As a, a diploma, as a course that is been, as a subject that people study about it, it has gone to that level. Can we reverse? Can we roll back? Can we see, find ways that if that can be lessened? We need greenery. We have to plant trees because we need carbon sequestration. So we need trees. We need fresh water. Yes. Next slide, please. Well, the past is actually history. Like I said, that the future is in the hand of the youth. Youth are well informed, in fact. And you know what needs to be done. You have the technical know-how also. So you carry the baton forward. Next slide, please. Let us all adapt a nature-positive lifestyle now to put nature on the path of recovery by 2030. Everyone knows 2030 is the goal. Everyone knows that the temperature the increase in beyond one degree, what is happening. And we are breaking the boundaries. I urge you all to watch uh, Sir David Attenborough's signature of documentary, like breaking boundaries. Next slide, please. You all are law students and there might be others who have joined, but you all, if you are from the background of law, you know that how, our law is enabling us. It is giving us the tool. It is equipping and it is empowering us with the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. This act also restricts hunting, capturing and killing of many of these species. This act protects these wonderful species through dedicated spaces known as protected areas. And 
These spaces provide habitat and protection to several species and help in maintaining the ecological balance. There are several kinds of protected areas. In India, we already have 101 national parks, 553 wildlife sanctuaries, 86 conservation reserves, 163 community reserves, and 25 main marine protected areas. So what more can you do? Next slide, please. You can read up our Living Planet report. You can post your sightings and whatever you see around in the iNaturalist or app or the India Biodiversity app. And then you can spread awareness, learn and spread awareness. So with this, I would like to end my talk. And if you all are ready, we can have a little quiz around this just probably about five questions, maybe. May I call upon Natasha, who is a senior education officer who is with me today, if she can help me with the quiz. Over to you, Natasha. I don't see Natasha, so probably I think he has, um, all right, I think for 6.30, we're just left with another eight minutes. Hello, yes, thank you for unmuting me. They had muted me okay. and I couldn't share my screen, hence I just wanted to, thank you so much. Just give me a second, please. I hope I didn't bore you all much. So let's have the quiz time and we have an anthem. I would like to end this with an anthem before the Q&A. Okay, I think she has been uh, muted again. So, all right, Soini, while you are there, can you play the anthem? Sure, ma'am. Can you please also give me access to play my share my screen? So Natasha, first let's let's have the yeah, while they give you that access, let us listen to this anthem, which is really beautiful and inspiring. And uh, in fact, Ricky Cage had given us the tune for the Earth Hour uh, during 2020 Earth Hour. Let's listen to this. There's no sound. So any no sound, you'll have to play from the beginning, please. Okay, ma'am. Is it audible now, ma'am? No, no. Now, ma'am? Yes. What the yeah, Murtana, he jokes are guy, Ikaba. अपना ही नहीं औरों का भी हमें रखना है ख्याल फल फूल हो या जीव हो जीने का हक सबको है जंगल हो या फिर शहर हो हर पग कुदरत ही तो है रखना संभाल
अकेले हम तो हैं नहीं बस करते फिकर नहीं हो मछलिया वन राज हो या बादलों में उड़ता बाज हो सेहत वाली Thank you very much, Natasha. If you can just play the quiz, it will take about a minute. So then we can take Q and A. If there is anything that you have, we can answer. Shall we start? Yes. yes. Okay, everybody. So please go to uh, mentimeter dot com. You can open that on your mobile phone or in a new tab. So go to www dot menti dot com and Use the code seven zero one zero two nine seven six. So just use it on a new tab, or you can browse it on through your phone, and just put www dot menti dot com, and you use the code seven zero one zero two nine seven six. We will just give you all half a minute to join us. Everyone join. It's going yes. to be fun. can see you all joining in wonderful don't worry there is no right or wrong that your name will not be uh, displayed right everybody so we can only four of you have joined we we'll wait for everybody it's very simple go to www.menti.com and you get code please put in the code 7010 2976 right lovely wow great that's nice but still very small number It's a really fun interactive quiz. We'd love all of you all to join in. So there are fourteen of you all who've joined in. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. I think you can uh, start on the count of three. Okay. Two, so yeah. yes, do join in. It would be wonderful to have all of you. So we're going to start. Remember the fastest finger first. You answer fast. You get points. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated around the world on Dash to demonstrate support for environmental protection. Is it March thirteenth, June sixth? April twenty second to December first. Which day is it? The Earth Day. Times up. 
and the right answer is April 22nd. Yes, World Environment Day is on uh, June 5th, but the Earth Day is on April 22nd. Let's look at the leaderboard, which shows the points allotted. As I said, the fastest finger first. Priyanshu seems to be have been the fastest. Wonderful. So let's go on to our second question. There are some places in the world with very high level of biodiversity. What are they called? Are they known as biodiversity sinks, biodiversity hotspots, life centers, natural heritage sites? So India is one of It has a very high level of endemism and biodiversity. So what is it called? Is it biodiversity sinks, hotspots, life centers, or natural heritage site? But wonderful. That's right. It's biodiversity hotspots. India has four biodiversity hotspots. Let's look at your leaderboard. So we have the fastest finger first, followed also by the highest points. Wonderful. Priyan Shu is still leading. Tally up with your points. Our next question, three out of eight, which we have. The number of different species in a specific area in a given time is known as species number, species richness, species count, or species distribution. So a different species in a specific area in a given time, what would it be called? The answer is species richness because it's a specific area in a given time. So it's species richness. Right. So we have, I think Priyanshu is still leading. Wonderful. That's excellent. Points adding up. Very nice. Sakura is leading. Wonderful. So there's a change. Wonderful. Let's go to the next one. Question number four. Mm -hmm. How many national parks are there in India? Is it 35, 55, 64, or 101? How many national parks are there in India? I'm sure all of you all should know this because it was also said in the presentation. Let's see how many of you all got it right. Time's up. And the answer is oh, only six. Wonderful. Yes, it's 101 National Parks. That's right. Let's look at the leaderboard. Points adding in. So we will see the change. Remember the fastest finger first two. It adds to your points. Clippy. Okay, we'll know who that is. Five out of eight. What do we call the free services that nature provides for the benefit of all humanity? Is it social services, economic services, ecological services, or ecosystem services? What are the free services that nature provides for the benefit of all humanity? Time's up. Right, it's ecosystem services. That's right, ecosystem services. Yep. Let's look at our points. Priyanshu was the fastest, but Abdul has reached up. Question six of eight. Why is it so important to conserve biodiversity? Is it because it gives us food and satisfies our necessities? It helps maintain healthy ecological cycles. It breaks down pollutants and provides us with a healthy home. Or it's all of the above. Which one is it? Time's up. I hope most of you got this right. Wonderful. That's excellent. Yes, it's all of the above. Nature does everything.
Kita was the fastest with Abdul again leading. Wonderful. It's wonderful to see all of y'all with such information and knowledge. So we come to question seven of eight. How many districts in India classified as water stressed affecting over 600 million people? Is it 185, 256, 300, and 385? I'm sure this is a bit hard, but it's still nevertheless important to know that. Water stressed affecting over 600 million people. How many districts is this in India? Well, wonderful. Yes, it's 256. So this is a huge, huge number of districts in India being affected. Abdul Shalidin and Sakura who's come in. And now we go into our last question for this evening. So I hope you answer to get more points. India targets bringing 33% of its geographical area under ge forest cover. What is the present forest cover? Is it 24.52, 21.67%, 11.6% or 18.45? What is the present cover and the target that India looks at achieving? Wonderful. That's excellent. A lot of you have got it right. Wonderful to know. That is the right answer. 21.67%. We will have a leaderboard and now we'll see our winner for this evening. Abdul. Wow, fantastic. Congratulations, nice. Abdul. And uh, you will receive WWF publication. One on the birds of Karnataka. Are you from Bangalore? I don't know. This is about Karnataka, though. And then one on the common snakes of Karnataka. And then the butterflies of Karnataka. Congratulations. Uh, so this Congratulations, set of three, Abdul. Uh, you will receive. I'll find out, I'll coordinate with your college in a coordinator and have the center cross during this biodiversity week, uh, 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 you know, during this, uh, for the talk that we had today, you'll receive this. Great. All right, we hope that you all enjoyed today's session and we have come to an end of today's uh, talk. Next slide. So, for the Q&A. If you all have got any questions, if there's anything in the chat box. Yes, ma'am, we have received two questions. Um, ma'am, the first question is as follows. Ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, ma'am. The first question is as follows. Like uh, the first question, ma'am, as we know, there are various initiatives and policies which have been taken by the government. Considering the current forest fires and other things, where do you think we lack or what changes do you think the government should take in order to create a future where humans live in harmony with the nature? Good question. So government is playing its role. But we as citizens also need to join hands and take the responsibility. Most of the times what happens is, it's the tendency to point at the government. There are policies, but policies are on the paper, right? So who follows? How many people even know about the policies? So there might be an entire forest department. It might not have got inculcated down to the last staff right so thereby there is a disconnect there can be this gap it is there policy is written for example if you see in the during the covid protocols we receive messages on the mobile and you see day in and day out in the news they say that follow social distancing mm -hmm. and they are allowing people to get gathered for the festival we are seeing it now in front of our eyes. Can ever social gathering happen? Uh, in the social gathering, can any social distancing happen? During the festivals, marketplaces, 
in jatras. So it is there. They say it for saying sake many a times, but for it to become practical, for it to get translated, there is so much more that needs to happen. And in fact, we as citizens, we also know because it's there in the news. Even here, when it is so vocal, when it is so loud and clear, we are not able to follow that social distancing or wear masks, use sanitizers, and in front of our eyes when things are happening. Forget about the forest. So I think that I've answered your question. Policies are there, but it needs to be implemented for it to get into the implementation level. There are a lot of things, work that needs to happen. So when that happens, I'm sure that there are definitely foresters who want to protect their forest. It is theirs. They want to protect. But they have got multiple challenges. They've got the community living around. They will want to bring their cattle for farming. The forest department cannot say foresters cannot stop them from bringing it inside. If they stop, probably there is one fine day during the dry season, there is going to be forest fire, which becomes very difficult for the limited forest staff to take care of. There, volunteers need to take action. They have to come forward and say that, yes, I'm there to help you to the forest department by providing them jeeps or by being there physically present when they call, there's a fire or by building awareness to the community around. So a lot of work needs to happen. We all have to work hand in hand to protect and that is possible. Definitely it is a doable thing. I hope I have answered. Yes, mom. Yes, mom. The second question is a uh, little connected to the first one. As you said, individuals have to take up their role. Like, what do you think in specific, or be it in day to day situation, what do you think is the role of an individual in conserving the biodiversity? Okay, good question once again. So, when we talk of biodiversity and what action I can take, it all translates to, for example, single use plastic. If I say avoid single-use plastic, you might be wondering, what is she talking about? If I avoid single-use plastic, how is it going to conserve biodiversity? Because if you know where the single-use plastic is going, it is from not from your dustbin to the garbage collector. So can you tell me from the garbage collector where it goes? We don't know. If you go to the ocean, if you see the globe as uh, something that is thrown in one country lands, ends up in some other country, in, in the shores of Asia, Asia, Asian Pacific, Asia Pacific or something like that, but it might be thrown from some other country. The currents carry this. This waste, this garbage, what we throw, the plastic can go to landfills and creating harm there can be eaten by the cows can be eaten by the other animals around. There's a lot of stink and stealth that comes out of it, polluting the air. And the, when, when it rains, all the chemicals, the poison get into the soil and that gets carried. That gets carried to agricultural areas. So whatever is planted there, right? So it is all the poison that gets seeped into the soil that gets carried into the grains and that ends up on our plate. So what goes around, it is coming back around. It is not going anywhere else, it's coming back to us. So by avoiding single-use plastic, you are avoiding it from getting into the landfill and getting into this harmful thing, getting everything poisoned, the air, the soil, or even the water, the ocean. So if it gets, you know, sneaks into the ocean there where it gets dumped, Garbage is getting dumped by tons every day, by tons. There, dolphins, turtles, sharks. So they will eat that. It gets into them. And the plastic, many, many a plastic gets broken into microplastic things, small tiny chips, which is not even visible for the naked eye. We see that the blue water, oh, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. But nothing much will be thriving there. There are no life forms there. They would have either died or moved out because it's, it's no longer a livable condition for them. So by avoiding one single example of that I gave you of single-use plastic, 
we can help protect the biodiversity in that manner. Likewise, by making the right choices, by not wasting food, by creating awareness, by telling people, the consumers and the manufacturers, if you can go ahead and tell them, why are you even producing this, this plastic package, whether it comes in the form of biscuits or when people order online, it's coming right in package. So can we avoid that? Talking to the RWAs, regularly taking part there, keeping your own community, uh, you know, your RWA clean, and being aware of it, have a tracker, see how that can be monitored. What is, it, what is it now? Give yourself a deadline, put a project around it, get people together and work so that biodiversity thereby can thrive by avoiding all these things. What is in my hand in, a, in my day-to-day -day choices that I make? So did I? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for answering all the questions, ma'am. Indeed, this was a very insightful session and the quiz which got up the enthusiasm of our participants and congratulating the winner. Yes, ma'am, it was a very insightful and enlightening session. It was an honor hosting you this evening, ma'am. Thank you very much. As we have reached the end of the session, before moving on to the vote of thanks, I would like to make an announcement regarding the India at 75 dialogue commemorating the 75th year of independence. You, 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 University Law College, uh, Model United Nations 2020 will be hosting the India at 75 dialogue, which will be held on 10th and 9th of October, which is a platform for multilingual deliberation, wherein the participants will be provided with a platform in order to trace the past seven decades of an independent India. And there'll be various other discussions going on, which is relevant to the current state of affairs. Then what are people waiting for? The registration forms are out. The eligible participants are kindly requested to register yourself for the India 75 dialogue. Without further ado, now on behalf of University Law College and Department of Studies and Law, I would like to render the vote of thanks. First and foremost, I would like to express my profound gratitude to our speaker of today's session, Ms. Saundarya Walima, Head, Karnataka State Office, WWF India, for enlightening us all with an extremely insightful session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bangalore University, Professor Dr. K. R. Venugopal, for providing us constant support and guidance in all our endeavors. Now, I would like to thank Professor Dr. Sureshvi Nadagauda, Honorable Principal and Chairman, University of Law, University Law College and Department of Studies in Law, Bangalore University for his constant support and guidance. I would also like to thank Professor Dr. N. Dashrat, Dean Faculty of Law, Department of Studies in Law, Bangalore University for his constant guidance. Now, I would also like to thank Professor Dr. V. Sudesh, former Principal and Dean, University Law College, Bangalore University for his constant guidance. I would also like to thank all our associate professor, Dr. Satish Gowda and associate professor, Dr. Jyoti Vishwanath Mam and Dr. L. Chandrakanti Mam, assistant professor, University Law College, Bangalore University. I would also like to thank all the faculty members for their constant support. Last but not least, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the students and participants who, who took part in today's event. Thank you one and all. And I also, I conclude this session by thanking University Law College and Department of Studies and Law for giving me this opportunity to be the master of ceremony of today's event. Thank you one and all, have a pleasant evening. Thank you very much for the opportunity given. Thank you. Thank you.